this is a video I've been thinking about doing for a while, and it is basically just a quick uh, video to demonstrate the differences between a standard, what you'd call a mil spec AR15 bolt carrier group, and a bolt carrier or bolt from the Knight's Armament SR15 rifle. So, what happened towards uh, the end of Eugene Stoner's life, and I don't know, I may have the history incorrect on this, but he was working with Knight's Armament during that time, and uh, in conjunction with them, made some minor modifications to the design of the bolt that goes in the AR-15 rifle, which of course he was the original designer of the AR-15 rifle, as we all know. Um, they called it the E3 bolt, and what it is, is it has some minor changes. Um, this is the E3 bolt out of the Knight's Armament. As you can see, those lugs are rounded. That's the primary difference. Um, whereas on a mil spec regular, those are squared off. They're uh, like, what would you call that? Uh, straight edges, right angles, uh, which obviously fits into the uh, star chamber on the uh, AR-15 rifle. Now, these rounded lugs, um, it's believed and I believe supported by Knight's Armament and the history, that that uh, design enhances the longevity of the bolt. This is really dirty, too. <laughs> God, every time I do one of these videos, I neglect to clean stuff before I put it on. Anyway, uh, the rounded lugs really do a lot to uh, enhance the longevity of the bolt face itself, the bolt. Because one of the known uh, areas of breakage on these is these these lugs will break off after over time. Especially right here, um, the two that are on either side of the extractor, those are known to break uh, and crack over, you know, thousands and thousands of rounds, depending on how, you know, the buildup of heat and all those pressures over the years. So I take these both down and we'll see some of the differences inside. Out of there. The firing pin, that's for the Knight's Armament. As you can see, this firing pin is slightly different than your normal mil spec firing pin as well, in that it is tapered. And quite dirty. <laughs> uh, here's the, take this one down out of the uh, standard bell spec here. Let me get that out of there. <sighs> this is a regular firing pin. Tapered also, obviously, the standard design, but you can see the difference. The Ignite's Armor Bit is tapered further down. The reason for that is right here the cam pin itself is hold on, tapered as you can see this is slightly different than the standard mil spec cam pin which I will pull out of the mil spec bolt right now as you can see that is just a straight cam pin. There's no taper to that. Whereas the Knight's Armament one has a slight taper to it. It's got a smaller diameter and a smaller hole going through it, which necessitates the taper on the actual firing pin. Now, the reason for this is because of another one of the characteristics that enhances the life of, this, of the E3 bolt. And that is this smaller hole here that creates thicker sidewalls to the actual bolt itself <clears throat> on a standard again mil spec ar-15 bolt you can see that's a bigger hole for the cam pin to go through and thinner sidewalls this is another area that's prone to breakage after thousands and thousands around and lots of buildup of heat so you can see the difference here between these two the uh Put, some, put that behind there. The thickness of those walls in the side of the bolt and the uh, size of that hole for the cam pin to go through. So, you have your different 
uh, actual lugs, which are curved and rounded on the E3 bolt, squared off on the mil spec bolt. Another difference is in the extractor. Um, the Knight's Armament uses a dual, a dual spring extractor, which actually enables them to use a full length spring, uh, which has a much longer life than the extractor that is put in one of these, which is just a short spring uh, that just because the reason for that is that the firing pin is going through there. On this one, these springs are on either side, so that they're able to go the entire width of the bolt. So it's a longer spring, better life, longer life, enabling the firing pin to travel between those two springs. <clears throat> and it just creates a longer lasting extractor. Bolt faces, there's not a lot of difference in the bolt faces and ejector, uh, but definitely a lot of difference in the extractors. Um, as far as the... Uh, actual spring mechanism and the, the general design of the extractor. Also, it looks like the location of the pin for the extractor is in a slightly different spot too. As you can see, further down on the mill spec bolt. So those are basically some of the uh, minor, I don't know if, I don't even know if I'd call them minor, but modifications that, uh, by the way, the bolt carriers are essentially the same. I don't believe there's any difference at all in the bolt carriers between mill spec and Knight's Armour Bay. Um, these are both uh, M16 style bolt carriers. You can see they're the full uh, length on the bottom there. But uh, Okay, so yeah, in closing, basically uh, you got your bolt lugs, your size of your cam pin hole that's in the bolt, which obviously a tapered pin, cam pin, and tapered firing pin and of course your extractor differences too so that all together uh, creates what is kind of widely considered more of a kind of a proprietary uh, bolt system uh, in the uh, Knight's Armament rifles which a lot of people don't like or they frown upon you know because it's because of parts interchangeability which is one of the things that uh, is you know most widely uh, known about and uh, uh, you know one of the one of the best features of the AR-15 platform is the fact that you know this wide parts interchangeability. Now Knight's Armament does state that the E3 if you experience a breakage on one of these which I don't believe anybody ever has I've never heard of one of these breaking I'm sure that somewhere along the way in the testing at Knight's Armament somebody has had to have broken one but as far as I know I never heard of one actually breaking on somebody but um, in a pinch, they say that you can use one of these regular bolts uh, in their rifle for what they say is as a limited, in limited use or limited duration or in, a, in an emergency type situation, which I, I'd like to know exactly, I'd be interested to know from Knights um, exactly how much use they would <laughs> say would be acceptable for the use of a regular bolt in their rifle. I don't know why you'd ever want to do it. But like I said, you know, if if you manage to break one, then yeah, you might need to do that. Um, so that's a possibility, but that could always happen, right? So there they are, Knight's Armament and a standard mil spec bolt carrier group. Uh, quite a few differences, and honestly, uh, I think they're really, uh, I think they're actually good modifications. Uh, However, like very expensive. The price you pay for Knight's Armament versus the standard mil-spec bolt is really pretty astronomical. But, like I said, I don't believe I've ever... If it's somebody could correct me if they've ever heard of anybody actually breaking a Knight's Armament E3 bolt. I don't know that that's happened. Anyway, that, that pretty much closes it up. This is a video I thought about doing for quite a while. I might have even mentioned doing it when I did the Knight's Armament video several months ago. So, there we go. SR-15 E3 bolt compared to a regular Air-15 mil-spec bolt. Actually, sorry, I got that wrong. This is the E3 right here. And this is the mil-spec. So, yeah. There we go. Happy shooting!